Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 12th, 2022. Well, my goodness, guys, if I sound a little bit different, I've had some microphone problems this morning. Hopefully things are okay, sound is okay. Um, let's take a look at what happened today, see if we can gain some information about how we want to approach the market on this Thursday after another very disappointing day after the uh, we heard that cpi and inflation just continues to chug right along so today let's settle in buckle up get ready for the thursday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts, see if we can figure out what we want to do today. Um, and we've got a, some more data coming our way that could upset the apple cart once again. So first off, let's take a look. Our overall downtrends are certainly in play here, and we have set new 2022 lows yesterday breaking on down and unfortunately bears are pushing a little bit more again this morning as we uh, wait for some ppi and jobless claims numbers keep in mind if they continue to push down um, if you look at the next um, uh, logical area of support it's right in through here so we could stop right here and bounce or we could continue to push on lower um, in the market and you know there's every reason to believe that we could fall all the way into 300 here in or 3,000 30,000 I mean in the Dow before we really start to find some support however we are oversold so we should be watching for that possibility of a relief rally kind of kicking in at any time but i gotta tell you this is a pretty bearish market and we're piling on with uh, ugly data and uncertainty around the world geopolitically let's take a look at our technicals here they continue to worse and notice that we've dropped through our uh, 500 day moving average here on the dow and our shorter term moving averages crossing down through the 50 pretty brutal in that chart if we take a look at our spy a very similar situation here um, we're really ugly in these charts and breaking down hard but one of the things um, we do want to be watching for is just that possibility of a relief rally that could occur anytime although these downtrends um, are strong and the bears are very very tenacious a rally back up into these resistance levels would not change anything but it would relieve the pressure here just a little bit um, if that could occur we have now um, officially fallen through that 4,000 area here um, closing uh, below 4,000 we've been trying to bounce back up in the pre-markets uh, to get back above 4,000 this morning that is not the case so pretty ugly situation here in the chart we do have a little bit of price support over here as you can see um, in um, the SPY but there's every reason to believe that we could continue to fall as inflation continues to plague the market and uh, the prices at the pump continue going up with new record highs again today in the national average gas price let's take a look at our technicals here technicals here pretty ugly um, well below our 500 day moving average now once again a relief rally could bring us back up to maybe test those areas but we want to keep in mind that as we rally back um, that just sets up that next opportunity for a potential sell-off um, in the market so watch that closely and then if we look at our QQQ um, boy this is pretty dismal and um, we saw some heavy tech selling in um, Asia last night as the um, the pressure here on tech continues to compound is you look um, ugly ugly downtrend here in the chart long ways before we get back up here to some price resistance in that chart we are oversold so fingers crossed we can get some kind of a relief rally coming in soon but breaking down below that 3000 level in the um, the nasdaq certainly not a good sign for the market and as you can see we've already drifted through some support here so our next um, area of a reasonable support would be down in here um, substantially lower so 
uh, keep that in mind. If um, if these numbers continue to come in bad, we could compound the selling here um, some more. So watch that closely. Again, technicals in the charts are dismal. We are way below our 500-day moving average um, in the chart. And notice that we have our 50 closing in on that 500-day and our shorter terms, even our 34 EMA, crossing down through that 50-day. So we're going to create a significant significant level of price resistance here in our technicals um, as well as the price action of that chart. Let's take a look at our Russell IWM also very very bearish setting new lows um, yesterday keeping in mind that our next level of price support um, in this chart is getting closer. We're right in that area where we might find that price support. If, uh, if that doesn't hold however well, we're going to look down here in the 159 area um, for that next little price support um, in the chart. Uh, dismal on the technicals. Notice our 50-day moving average has crossed down through the 500-day moving average and our shorter-term moving average is crossing down as well. So you can see that we have created a substantial level of technical and price resistance in that Russell chart. Not a good sign for um, the market. However, we are overdue for that relief rally. And if we take a look at a couple things that might give us some hope for that, if we take a look at the VIX, I, I do think it was interesting yesterday that while we continue to sell and make new lows in the market, our VIX really didn't um, expand. We just kind of danced around here going sideways on the VIX as if fear didn't seem to matter at all in the market. So, so far we have not seen that panic move in the market to spike us up here. And I think if we spike up through there, we do have some trouble um, ahead if that does occur. But so far, nothing, you know, we've got a little trend in here and we've got a little trend in here. Um, Nothing terrible here in that VIX just yet, so we'll want to watch those numbers today. If they can help those bulls find inspiration to defend, we could get that little bit of relief rally and a little bit of pressure coming off of the VIX. But if those bears continue to be inspired, we could easily see that um, spike and panic start to come in at any time. Let's keep um, um, keep that in mind as we move forward. And if we take a look at our T2122, this gives us that best hope that we should be catching some kind of a relief rally. We've been buried down here on the bottom, but we just keep getting that compounding effect of more and more data points coming out that are just not helping us and not inspiring those bulls to be buyers. So watch that closely here. Um, we have opened a huge upside opportunity here if we can find some reason for bullishness. So watch that closely. Perhaps that PPI number can help us today. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. Our T2108, um, by golly, just continues to get worse and we keep dropping. If you notice right over here, our worst level in the 2020 sell-off at the pandemic you can see we are quickly approaching that with only 12 13 percent of our stocks holding above their 40-day moving average that that's pretty darn bearish that's pretty hard to paint a bullish picture on this but at the same time it's also saying that we're so extremely bearish a relief rally could occur at any time and then our t2107 very much the same where we continue to sink we're nowhere near our 2020 lows in here but only 20 percent 21 percent of our stocks holding above that 200-day moving average as we continue in the downtrend, setting new lows for the year here. Um, um, certainly an oversold condition, but um, with the data that we've got coming today, it could can, can easily continue to be oversold. Let's take a look at our T2101. Here again, we saw that T2101 continuing to push up, showing us the momentum for the downside move continuing to expand here. So even though we didn't see any panic, um, we are pushing that momentum higher on this sell-off in the market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And boy, our economic calendar. Hmm. 
we have got a couple things on here that could be a little bit interesting today. First off, we've got jobless claims. Jobless claims, we have um, analysts suggesting that those have improved over the week. Remember, last week we had a surprise tick higher. And with all of this negative sentiment in the market, we cannot rule out the possibility that we could start to see jobless claims move higher. When economies slow down, businesses stop hiring. So you'll want to keep an eye on that, that very real possibility that we could start to see claims starting to tick up is something we have to consider. And then keep in mind that analysts also have uh, projected that PPI would come in uh, better um, than last time. Um, obviously, that didn't work so well for us on the CPI. But watch that PPI here this morning. Um, certainly possible. I just can't imagine that uh, producers are seeing a whole lot of relief just yet. Um, but let's keep an eye on it. Natural gas um, will be later on. We've got a four week, an eight week, and a 30 year bond auction. We do have um, one Fed speaker, and then later on today, the Fed balance sheet. Keep in mind, guys, as we continue to move forward with, you know, national gas prices um, hitting new records, um, diesel just going through the roof, adding cost to everything we buy, sell, or do, you might want to keep an eye on this. Um, tomorrow, Friday, we have our consumer sentiment number, and it would be pretty hard for me to think this is going to see an improvement on Friday. So... Well, it's possible, but watch that close. Then let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today. Our earnings calendar is a busy one. We've got quite a few um, listed on the calendar, but we don't have as many notables right now. We're starting to drop off on those notables. If you guys saw yesterday, our Disney, uh, Disney reported um, pretty good results, but then they guided lower. And you can see Disney, um, whoops. Disney um, uh, getting a gap down and some more selling here this morning. Um, we're seeing a lot of these notable type stocks just disappoint um, um, overall. So it's been a pretty rough season. And I, I got to tell you, with the economy slowing, I can't imagine next season earnings are going to be uh, much better. Um, as a matter of fact, I think they could be substantially worse. So just be prepared. We may not be done with um, this bear market. Let's take a look at some of these notables for today. And keep in mind, guys, um, that um, if you want the full list of the notables, make sure and click that link just below the title of the video. That will take you over to the morning blog. So first off, we're going to have um, AFRM, AFRM reporting today. Um, obviously, pretty brutal chart here, um, well below its IPO price. Not looking good at all. We've seen a lot of this here recently. Um, TAST um, pushing lower, as you can see, been in a real nasty downtrend. We're not back down here to these 2020 lows, but certainly in that bearish move. We'll want to watch that um, report today. Uh, TTM is one we might want to pay attention to. Toyota um, um, said that they were going to um, um, slow down production. Um, and we can see other um, auto companies, auto manufacturers running into the same kind of problems with, um, with slowdowns due to chip shortages. And I think what we're starting to see is some of those supply chain problems may actually be getting worse with the shutdown in uh, China going on. So watch those carefully. Um, we're, we've got ACB on the list today, a little bit of cannabis in here. I don't know that that's going to um, help us out a whole lot on the day. And last um, I'll talk about this morning is POSH. Uh, Posh, um, we're seeing even, you know, the higher end type retail uh, getting heavily punished. Um, you can see uh, been selling since its IPO, continued, continuing to drop, and we're seeing that um, all over the place in these newly issued companies. Um, they're well below their, um, their 
IPO prices. So keep an eye on that as these things report. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But just real quickly, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could help me out and click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up. So you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful and helpful, if you could please do me that favor, click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment. I, I tell you honestly, guys, I'm humbled every day by your kindness and support of the content. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I... Um, Oh, just uh, just a big thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel um, um, and um, seems to enjoy the, the content without all the hype and prediction in the market, just really looking at those technicals. So thank you very much, everyone. And thank you so much for everyone who continues to support the channel with Buy Me A Coffee. Um, and you can find that link also right down below the title of the video. Let's take a look at some stocks that well, might be up for consideration. We're going to have to be very, very careful in this market, however, because today anything is possible with that data we have coming out. But I want to continue to point out um, stocks that seem to be holding up quite well. We're seeing Hershey um, gapping down this morning, but trying to bounce right back up. It was trying to move higher yesterday. We're si still seeing food prices move up and show a lot of strength. Um, SJM, Schmuckers, if you're looking for some bullishness in the market, look to that food sector. Schmuckers um, trying to break out of some highs here. So keep an eye on that. We've got KHC that was working um, this consolidation here and trying to push on out. Might have that opportunity to move on higher here today. So keep an eye on some of those stocks. Um, kind of interesting that um, uh, food continues and, and good divvy payers seem to be the place where folks are going to. Take a look at uh, Merck. Merck finally had a really good move here. If you guys have been watching this, I had a, this alerted in this trade. It popped pretty hard. We still have some resistance over here to deal with in the chart, but Merck holding up pretty well. I think it is worth keeping an eye on here. Um, it may have some more upside as healthcare and some of these good old boring companies that pay dividends and actually make money um, uh, show lots of signs of strength. Take a, a look at BMY in that same area, BMY could be setting up here. It's been consolidating for quite a while. Watch for that opportunity that that might um, eventually push out here to the upside. We're going to want to keep an eye on these bond yields. They keep bouncing around here um, quite a bit here just recently. If we take a look at like um, our 20 or excuse me, our 30 year treasury, pretty substantial pullback here this morning. And that could start to help that tech sector if we can start seeing these bonds pull back a little bit. But I want you to notice that it's pulling back right into trend and possible support. So if our PPI number is bad, we could certainly see that uh, tick right back higher. So keep an eye on some of these bond yields. Um, not a good situation for the market and it's particularly rough on tech. So keep a close eye on those. Um, you might want to, um, with that in mind, it's been kind of interesting um, seeing um, the U.S. dollar continuing to move higher. U.S. dollar continues to surge. Now, one of the reasons that is the case is because the Fed has projected all of these rate increases and yet we have seen China continuing to print money um, that's putting more upside pressure on the dollar and um, we're also seeing japan in a situation where they're not raising rates putting more pressure upside pressure on the u.s dollar as we continue to move in this fight inflation mode here in the market now this could moderate i, I see that christine lagarde is talking about um, committing to some rate increases um, there in europe so watch that carefully we could start to see that pull back and that would be a bit helpful for the market but this is going to really complicate our trade situation uh, moving forward if that dollar continues to spike like
like this and other countries don't start working on their inflation problems um, that really is spread around the world. So watch that closely as that dollar continues to surge. A few other places that might be of interest. I think it was interesting yesterday that we saw gold moving up with the US dollar. Now this morning it's moving down and we continue to see this demand destruction um, in these and this often occurs in the market. Everything gets kind of drawn into um, the selling here. And One of the things that can happen, remember a lot of the buying that's gone on over the last couple of years was borrowed money. What, what I mean by that is a lot lot of margin and you can imagine as we continue to push down margin calls coming in and folks will be selling gold and silver and things like that to make those margin calls so uh, keep a close eye on those if you're um, looking for short trades um, I keep mentioning um, these big banks um, the big banks continue to look very very bearish um, moving on down setting new lows um, it, but I wouldn't chase them here. I would wait for a rally back for that next opportunity to get short on these. And I got to tell you, we're continuing to see um, major problems, um, even in companies that just make tons and tons of money, have huge cash hoards. Um, but Microsoft getting drawn into the selling as well, as you can see, breaking some substantial support in the chart continuing to push down and this is another one of those key factors that occurs in a bear market even a company that maybe doesn't deserve being sold off this hard gets drawn into it as everything starts to push down and this is a another one of the effects of etfs that when that bearishness comes in all these etfs own a lot of microsoft and when when retail sellers are are, are dumping stocks they get affected uh, negatively affected as well. Now one of the things we do have to watch for 401ks and mutual fund um, redemptions could begin at any t any time and what I mean by that is that um, you know mom and pop investor out there have been watching this and it's just getting worse and worse and worse and you could easily he uh, hear them um, starting to pick up those phone call uh, phones and calling their 401ks calling their mutual funds saying get me out and that's where we get that forced redemption and we kind of get that pile on in the market so um, as we as this process continues watch these tech companies for any rally back there may be opportunity to short those stocks um, as they rally back up if this pylon continues so I hate to sound so bearish on the market but that's the way it is right now and I also want to encourage everyone to not fight this because this has happened before and it will probably happen again when we overinflate the market, this is the natural process. We go through these um, um, times where we get way too over exuberant. Everybody all of a sudden jumps into the market and thinks this is the quickest place to get rich um, out there. And then they find out that's not the case and they find out it's not as easy as they think it is. And then the market starts to pull back. And then what happens is we compound the bearishness um, in the market just like we did the bullishness and we tend to push the market down much more than it really should be pushed down we go into an extreme on the other side and mr. market is pretty common for doing that so this is a, a normal process don't get involved in the gloom and doom work with the trends of the market don't fight it because when this is over and it will be over at some point in time. This will pass. And at some point in time, there's going to be great companies at bargain basement prices. And that's when trading becomes really, really profitable. So don't lose your money during, during this process. Don't fight the trend. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And I will see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. I wish you all of the best today.